Hello. Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. I have been solving math problems for GRE out of this book here. GRE, practicing to take the GRE, general test, 10th edition. If you do not own this book, purchase one immediately. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 208, quantitative comparison question number 12. There are 15 questions in the set and therefore the last fives are difficult and this is number 12, one of the last fives. Uh, only about half the people who took the only about half the people who took this particular exam got this particular question cor correctly. Uh, about 49% got it right, 51% got it wrong. So you could say the majority got it wrong. Let's take a look at it. So you see the, the, the problems in, in this exam, the math problems in this exam, when people get it wrong, vast majority of the time, it's not because they do not know the math, it's because they do not know how to take the exam. There's a big difference between the two concepts. And what I teach in my private tutoring, face-to-face -face tutoring that I do with my client, uh, is the skill that one needs in order to take an exam such as this one. This is a standardized exam. Taking a standardized exam is not the same as taking the exam that you and I took in the school years. It's a very different exam. This is number 12, only half the people got it right. And it's not because the math is difficult. It's because how, uh, how, the, word, how, how the question is worded and uh, making sure that, uh, that you do not fall for, for, fall for the trap. Let's take a look at it. Enough for the talk. It says, rectangular region R has area 30. So we know that we have a rectangle. And they're calling it R. Has area of 30. Don't ask me why they, why we have to give this rectangle a name. Why R? Why not P? Why not Q? Why not X? Why not Z? I don't know. These people who give this exam, they have this nasty habit. They have this uncontrollable urge to name all the pictures. Whenever they give you a square, or a triangle, or a rectangle, or a circle, they want to christen it. For those of you who do not know the word, they want to christen everything. Uh, it's a nasty habit. Just don't worry about it. Don't worry about this R. We have a rectangle which has an area of 30. That's all we are told. Okay? The fact, the fact that this, uh, this R has a name but this, the fact that this rectangle has a name R, I am very touched and I'm very pleased to make the, make the acquaintance of the bloody thing, but I'm not interested in the name. Only thing that I'm interested in is that it has an area of 30. And then I'm asked to compare, let me uh, either that or raise everything and bring everything together, I don't want to do that. And then I'm asked to compare the perimeter of R versus 25. Now the reason why only half the people got this question right is because the people, the people who got it wrong, half the people who got it wrong, the reason is because they do half the work. Here's what they do. You have a few First of all, what does perimeter mean? Perimeter means sum of all the sides. So first thing you do is you make up a rectangle with the side uh, with the area 30. I'm just going to make something up, something very simple. How about this? This side is 5 and this side is 6. This has an area of 30, doesn't it? 5 times 6 is 30. The area is 30. That's how you find the half. That's, that's, how, that's how you find the area, length times width, area of 30. They want me to compare the perimeter of this thing versus 25. Let's find out the perimeter of this thing. I'm going to erase this inside part. The perimeter simply means sum of all the sides. Perimeter means sum of all the sides. That's what perimeter means. So this is 5, this is 6, this is 5, and this is 6 because it's a rectangle. Everything is, this side is equal to this side, and this side is equal to this side. The perimeter of this thing is uh, 5 plus 5 is 10. 
and 6 plus 6 is 12, is 22. They want you to compare with 25. This is 22, this is 25, therefore this quantity is bigger, the answer is B. The answer is B, because this quantity is bigger. So it works out that quantity in column B is bigger, therefore the answer is B. Is it? The answer to that question is not necessarily so. We have done only half the work. The work that I have done so far does not tell me what the answer is. The work that we have done so far only tells us what the answers are not. Let me explain you what, let me explain you what I mean by that. There are four answer choices. What is, it that you, what is it that you're claiming? What is it that you're claiming when you pick answer choice A? When you pick an answer choice A in this question, quantity comparison, what you're claiming is that the quantity in column A, I'm going to actually read it because it's on the top here. On the front, very top of the page, I'm going to read the instruction. It says A, if the quantity in column A is greater. This is how they say it. Now I'm going to say it a little bit differently. I'm going to insert one word. So pay attention. A, if the quantity in column A is always greater. That's what you're claiming, always. They do not tell you that, but that's what it means. They leave out the word always. When you pick B for the answer choice, what you're claiming is that the quantity in column B is always greater. When you pick C for the answer choices, what we're claiming is that the quantity in column C, two quantities in the two columns, there is no column C, sorry. What you're claiming uh, when you pick C is that the two quantities in the two columns are always equal. I have first, I have found here a situation where a quantity in column B is bigger. What, what, it, what it tells me is not what the answer is, but rather what the answer is not. Based on the work that I have done so far, I know now that the answer is not A. That I know for a fact. Why? Because A would have meant that the quantity in column A is always bigger. But the quantity in column A could not possibly be always bigger because I found one instance when it's not. That rules out A. It also rules out C. Because C would have meant that the two quantities are always equal. Well, the two quantities in the two columns cannot possibly be always equal because I have found one instance when they are not. That rules out C. The answer is either B or a D. So now, at this stage, what I have to do is think creatively. Think in a, in a, in a, in a creative way outside the box. And for that, there are four kind of numbers that you have to keep in mind in the exam when you're taking the quantity comparison questions. These numbers are what I call nasty numbers, the funky numbers, the kinky numbers. There are four of them. They come in four variety. One is zero, one is one, then negative, and then fractions. Well, of course, we cannot we cannot uh, speak in terms of zero because you cannot have a side equal to zero. Let's try one. What if what if instead of instead of my rectangle looking like this, I'm looking for a rectangle of area of thirty. Instead of being five by six, let me pick a different different marker that is a little bit darker and a different color. Oh, there's nothing there. Let me look at the clock in the back, just one second. I am taking too long. We are almost nine minutes into it. I have to wrap it up. What if instead of instead of being five by six, what if instead of being five by six, we were dealing with one by thirty? One by thirty, for example, like this. This side is 1, this side is 30, this rectangle also has the area of 30. But now the perimeter of this one guy, this guy, this one is 30 plus 30 is 60, 1 plus 1 is 2, is 62. Before it was 22. So before the answer was B, now the answer is A. Because we are comparing it with 25. Because we have conflicting answers, because we have conflicting answers, depending on which kind of, which rectangle we're dealing with, all they tell me is that the area is 30. The, 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 it doesn't tell me what, what, what the dimensions are. And until I know the exact dimensions, I cannot tell you the perimeter. It could be 1 by 30, it could be 5 by 6, to say nothing of the fact that there are fractions. It could be, it could be half and 60. It could be one, one tenth of a, well, you get the idea. It could be one, one, one millionth of a 30, 30 million. It could be anything. It could be, there are infinite possibilities of this rectangle. And we cannot really tell the perimeter of a rectangle at all. The answer is D. Answer is D. I hope you found it helpful. 
If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, face-to-face -face tutoring, or if you wish to uh, buy the solution manuals to this problem, or if you wish to talk to me about any aspect of the GRE at all, go to my website at www.prepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepprepp